All right, brothers, inshallah, uh, settle down. <coughs> All right, bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So alhamdulillah, the night before, we finished verse 14. Um, Ala ya'lamu man khalaq, wa huwa al-latif al-khabir. We did that ayah the night before. And alhamdulillah, you know, by the qadr of Allah, of course, we didn't have anything uh, last night. So inshallah ta'ala, we're going to do verse 15. And then from tomorrow, we're going to, you know, inshallah, speed it up a little bit, uh, do through two or three ayat uh, each night until we finish. So verse 15 is, of course, the middle of the surah. And if you remember, we mentioned uh, Surah Al-Mulk is 30 ayat. And this is from the sunnah that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would recite uh, every night before going to bed, before sleeping. So in verse 15, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ ذَلُولًا فَامْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِهِ وَإِلَيْهِنْ نُشُورٌ هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ ذَلُولًا It is he who has made the earth ذَلُولًا Subservient, tamed, under your order. You know, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this earth for our use, for our benefit. If you recall, if you remember, when we first started Surah Al-Mulk, the first few ayat, Allah was talking about who remembers what? Jalal? Death and also? That's the stars and, okay, good job. So alhamdulillah, the, one of the youngsters is awake tonight, right? So, uh, Allahumma barik. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of the surah, he was of course talking about death, reminding us that this life is temporary and the next life is permanent. But he was telling us and the people, all of mankind, to look above, look at the stars, look at the planets, look at the whole creation. And then come to the conclusion that all of that is beyond your grasp. There's no way you will be able to understand the complexity and the full uh, ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in how he has created the stars, the entire universe. So now in this verse, he's telling us or mankind to look at something that is closer, something that you can feel and touch, that you walk on, that you touch and you eat from, the earth. So in the beginning, Allah said, look above, look at the whole universe, the stars, the skies, the planets. Now Allah is saying, look at the earth. Uh, brothers in the back, inshallah, uh, the louder I'm getting, the louder they're getting. So we're having a competition. <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran and elsewhere, لَخَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ خَلْقِ النَّاسِ The creation of uh, the heavens and the earth is greater than the creation of mankind. It's more complex. It shows the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even more. I mean, what are we compared to the entire universe? Nothing. So Allah is telling us in this verse, this is a different verse, not from Surah Al-Mulk, that the creations of the heaven and earth is much more complex, much greater than creating you, people, right? وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But most of mankind, they don't understand, they don't know this, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning, He tells us to look at above us, now He's telling us to look beneath us. هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضِ it is he who has made the earth, ard and earth, this is earth. It is he who has made the earth, dhalulan. Dhalulan meaning it is subservient. It has been tamed. It has been subjugated and made submissive for you, Bani Adam. So the whole earth has been made subservient for your use, for your benefit, for you to live in, for you to enjoy. So every single thing is in perfect balance. Every single thing is in perfect balance in, in this earth. And it has been made intentionally by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dhalulan, subservient, so that we can survive, we can enjoy, we can live luxuriously, we can do whatever it is that we want to within the folds of Islam, of course. Now, here's a key point here. So Allah says here, هُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمُ الْأَرْضَ ذَلُولًا It is He who has made the earth subservient for you. But here's the question, why are we on earth in the first place? You want to answer, why are we here? Why are we in this dunya life? Okay, it is a test. Now, 
our father and mother, Adam alayhi salam, Adam and Eve, our father and mother, they were created in Jannah. They were living in Jannah until Iblis deceived our father, caused him to sin. Then his wife, our mother, also ate from the forbidden tree. As a punishment, Allah sent Adam alayhi salam, his wife, and his progeny to this dunya. This earth is a place of punishment. Now imagine what do we do? Us as fathers, when we punish our kids, we don't give them all the playstations and the computers and the food and go enjoy yourself in, while you're being punished in the room. Nobody does that. When we catch criminals and we want to punish them, we send them to prison. So this is human society. When we want to punish somebody, we don't let them enjoy. We make them suffer. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent the human race in this dunya on earth as a punishment. Yet, from his rahmah, he made the earth dhalulan. It is a place that has been made subservient for you. Allah could have not given us any type of luxury because this is a place of punishment after all, right? But subhanAllah, from his infinite mercy, he is ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He is al-Ghafoor. He is al-Wahhab. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this place, the whole earth, a place where you can eat, you can drink, you can enjoy, even though it is a place of punishment. It is a place of test. Right? So Allah made this earth the lunan. Then he says the purpose that recognized this. This earth is made, has been made subservient for you. Famshu fi manakibiha. Famshu. Walk through manakibiha. All the regions of the earth. Allah did not say, stay in your bubble. Allah literally commands us, فَمْشُوا fi manakibiha. Go to every region of the earth, the flat plains, the slopey areas, the hills, the oceans, go through the earth. Go look at the entire earth that you live in. Don't just stay in your bubble. Go walk through the earth and وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِهِ And enjoy and eat from the provisions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you in this earth. So, famshu fi manakibiha. Walk through and travel through all the areas of this earth if you are able to do so. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the believers. Now, there's lots of wisdom that Allah says, famshu fi manakibiha. There's a lot of hikmah behind why Allah told us go through the earth, travel through the earth. First and foremost, of course, when you travel, you get to see a lot of places that Allah has created. You are in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? For example, there are certain plants, certain fruits, certain mountains, certain animals that you will not see living in America. But if you go to the Middle East, you go to the Eastern countries, if you go to Africa, if you go to South America, you will see different types of creatures. You will see different types of fruits, taste different types of fruits, and so on and so forth. That's one of those wisdoms, that when you go through the earth, you get to see all the different things that Allah has created in this earth. It's not just your place, where you were born, where you were raised. Go to the other places and see what I have created there. Go there and enjoy from the bounties that I have created there. So Allah commands the believers to travel through the earth, right? And this is something that a lot of Muslim families, subhanAllah, I'm sorry to say, they're very poor. Very, they might have money, they might have education. But uh, sadly, the parents do not understand taking a break with their children and traveling. They, that concept doesn't exist. We see the kuffar doing this more than the believers, even though Allah is telling us, فَمْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا Allah is commanding us, Go through the earth and look at the places that I have created, right? Look at the different things. So these are things that you want to do with your family, inshallah ta'ala. You know, don't just be part of the rat race in this dunya and work, 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 work. What are you going to do with all this money if you don't spend it? Spend it on yourself and your family. Go to different places. Even in America, you're stuck in New Jersey for the past 20, 30 years, right? Go, go to California, go to the Midwest. Go to the south, look at even just this country, right? If you can go to Canada, look at the places in Canada. Do these things with your family. Go through the earth, see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has created differently from just the place that you live in. You can eat from the different halal foods and fruits that Allah has made. That's one thing. Second, also it shows you, it teaches you the different areas that Allah has destroyed. And we'll mention this tomorrow, but I'm just briefly mentioning now. There are many areas of this world that Allah has completely destroyed because those people disbelieved in Allah. The Anbiya came to them, they rejected the Anbiya, and Allah destroyed those nations and made them a sign. So when you see that, you, it will shake your iman that subhanAllah, this is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Look at Fir'aun, look at the ancient Egyptians. People are still mesmerized at how they could build these pyramids and the Sphinx and all these things. Right? Even with modern day technology, we cannot build st such structures. How did they do it? Thousands of years ago. But it doesn't matter. They disbelieved in the message of Musa alayhi salam. Allah destroyed all of them. And those pyramids and the Sphinx and all these things are there. People go and enjoy and have the camel rides and collect the sand and take pictures. But that's not the point. The point is when you go see these places, it reminds you of Allah's adab. That if you reject Tawheed, this is your fate. Right? But we'll expound on this inshallah tomorrow when we discuss uh, 16, 17, and 18 uh, ayat. Then the other thing is, when you go to the different areas of the world, it teaches you how to deal with other human beings. Right? Let's suppose somebody who, just take an, even an average American. If he, his whole life, he's lived in Atlantic City, born and raised, he's 30, 40 years old, he never left Atlantic City. Even as an American, he will not learn anything. He has not met people in Texas. He has not met people in Florida. He has not met people in Minnesota or California or in Boston. Every region has a certain type of culture, has a certain type of difference. When you travel through the earth, you come in contact with other human beings. It teaches you adab. Something that is okay among, with you and your family and your tribe and your village may not be okay with other human beings. It forces you to learn manners. You know, it forces you. I'm gonna, I, I, I don't mean to say this as a joke, this is actually real. In the Vietnamese culture, <laughs> in the Vietnamese culture, they pick boogers as if it's nothing. Like <laughs> somebody said, oh. All right, this is their culture, right? It's, it's fine among them. Okay, I had a lot of Vietnamese friends growing up in Philly, so this is how I know, right? We'll be like, yo, man, what the heck? <laughs> this is disgusting. But that's their culture. But when they come in contact with other people, they'll learn, wait a minute, you're just talking to somebody and digging your nose is very ill manners, right? Same thing. Us as Bengalis or Pakistanis or Egyptians, maybe you do certain things that's okay with you and your people, right? But what, the moment you go outside, somebody else is going to be like, hey, what are you doing? This is not from Adab. This is kind of abusive, right? Uh, like when I went to Bangladesh in my high school period, you know, in America, we give everybody thumbs up. So my aunt was saying, don't do this because this is a cuss word in Beng Bengali. Don't go around in the streets and show thumbs up. They're going to think you're saying some bad thing. But I said, we come from America. This means thumbs up. It's a good job, right? So it teaches you that you, you have to know human society that Allah has created. It teaches you manners, it teaches you how to deal with other human beings, it broadens your mind, it makes you open-minded, right? So, from Shufi manakibiha. So there are many other wisdoms as to why Allah said, travel through the earth, look at the different creations. And then lastly, Allah says, وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِ So as you're traveling through the different places in the earth, eat from what Allah has provided for you. And eating, وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِ, this, this doesn't only refer to food. It also refers to your livelihood. You live in some place, maybe you, you can't find a job, right? You, you're not able to earn for yourself and your family. No problem. فَمْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا Go to some other place in the earth, وَكُلُوا مِنْ رِزْقِ Find your livelihood somewhere else. Isn't this why people travel? This is why most of you came to this country because you had economic crises or whatever may be the case where in the different lands you came from. So you came to this country to find livelihood. Right? It's okay. But then Allah gives the main point. nushur. As you're traveling through the earth, as you're enjoying my bounties, as you're eating and earning your livelihood, 
do not forget that you are going to come back to me. Why does Allah say this? As you're moving through the earth, don't lose your iman. Enjoy Allah's bounties. Eat, earn the money, earn the livelihood. Enjoy with your families, no problem. Wa ilayhin nushur. At the end of the day, you're going to die and I am going to judge you. So refrain from doing things that are haram. Refrain from eating things that are haram. Refrain from seeing things that are haram. Right? So check yourself. Enjoy the earth. The whole earth has been made for you. Dhalulan, subservient, for you to take benefit from. However, remember wa ilayhin nushur. So Allah connects the beginning and the end together and sandwiched in the middle is from Shufi Manakibiha wa kulu min rizqi. Now something amazing, and this is the last thing I'll mention. This is the hadith in Sunan Ibn Majah from Umar radiallahu anhu, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَوَكَّلْتُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ If you, us, if you people had the proper tawakkul ala Allah, the reliance upon Allah like He rightfully deserves, the way Allah deserves to be relied upon, if you had that type of tawakkul, what would happen? لَرَزَقَكُمْ كَمَا يَرْزُقُ الطَّيْرِ Allah would provide for you just like He provides for the birds. If you had the proper tawakkul ala Allah, what happens? تَغْدُوا خِمَاسًا وَتَرُوحُوا بِطَانًا They leave in the morning empty stomachs. They come back in the evening with their bellies full. Allah is the one who provides for them. So if we as men, people, had that type of tawakkul, Allah would take care of us in this earth just like He takes care of the birds. But the problem is we lose that reliance in Allah. We start doubting. You know, some, maybe... You know, some of the young brothers, they complain, Shaykh, I graduated, but I can't find a job yet. This is, a po- this is proof that you don't have the right tawakkul in Allah. Why are you losing confidence? Why are you losing hope in Allah? You went to school, you studied, you got, degree, you got a degree in a field that, mashallah, has jobs. You, ha- you can't lose hope in Allah. Look how Allah provides for the birds. They leave in the morning empty stomachs. They come back with full bellies. So you go out, work in this world, Earn your livelihood. Allah will take care of you. But the point is, wa ilayhin nushur. As you're doing all of that with yourself, your families, do not forget that you will return to Allah. So this world is not all. Just because you miss eating and earning a few things, don't go crazy. Wa ilayhin nushur. The reward is with Him. So as you travel, keep a balance. Stay within the folds of Islam. So we'll end here, inshallah. We'll continue with verse 16. Uh, tomorrow, inshallah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.